everyone. Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studio. Welcome back. Joining me for some more fun projects. Um, so we're going to do a bunch of things today. Um, one of them is we're going to finish up our bird houses. And there's this one. I even had a little piece of foil still stuck to it. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some cool... Um, tools that I happen to keep around for doing things like epoxy and stuff like that. Um, hey, Sandy, nice to see you here. So the first thing we're going to do is finish this guy, and then we're going to top coat, and then we'll go into the tools. Let me flip the camera down here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, this guy we've completely finished up. Uh, this morning I came in, put a little foil adhesive on, and I even foiled the little stand here. So he is ready to go. That just needs top coating. This one, I did the body in the foil, our Bailey's flower foil yesterday. This morning I came in, I applied a coating of our Artsyville foil adhesive and we're going to go oh, 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 magenta on this. Now these bird houses can go outside if you use an exterior rated top coat. And um, because the, the foil adhesive is not uh, exterior rated and some of the foils will fade. Now the tie-dye ones held up beautifully. The one I know fades a lot is our blue glitter stars. So that's one I would not recommend leaving outside for long periods of time. Hi, Cora, nice to see you here too. Okay, this is our magenta foil. It is not a fabric friendly foil. It is only for hard surfaces. This is by a different manufacturer than a lot of mine come from. So when I get these rolls, you can see they have a little silver edge on the bottom. You wanna cut that off. Um, simply because this will release foil and not the color on your surface if you don't. Um, yeah, ask me how I've known. I, I've, I've had silver stripes show up in the middle of weird stuff because I got lazy and I didn't trim it down. I just want to make sure I get it all off because I'm going to use all of this foil. All right, so I'm going to set this so you can see it. The first thing I'm going to do is apply the foil to the roof. Now, this is a gorgeous color. Again, and I'll show you, because the wood for these is coarse, even though I sanded it and painted it and lightly sanded it again, it's still going to have some coarse texture. But that kind of works because our Artsyville foil adhesive doesn't self-level. Um, and that makes uh, the fact, that just works with the fact that this is slightly coarse texture on this surface that actually just enhances it. All right, I'm going to go around the edges because, yeah, I put foil adhesive on all the edges. And look, I mean, that is stunning. Look how beautiful that came out. All right, let's do the front. Now, I will probably be turning this in ways where you can't see everything. Um, and for very good reason, this is an awkward shape with the gabled roof and everything. And sometimes I just have to get at it in different ways. And oftentimes when I'm working on small pieces like this, I like to cut my foil into smaller pieces. It makes it more manageable. Plus I get a lot more edges um, where I might need them. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Ooh, it's a dropped a piece. <sighs> okay. So by edges, I mean this kind of an edge here. So if I wanna get neatly into that crease area here where the gabled uh, window is, I'm gonna do that. Now notice I'm not going all the way up to the edge here and here. I wanna leave that a little soft because that'll help me when I need to come back in and fill in the rest of the pink to not have a seam. Go. Oh, that's nice. And then I'm going to come in here. Oh, that's working perfectly. And see, then I don't get any seams. And this adhesive is so good. Oftentimes, I don't need a brush. I can use our, our foils are super easy to release 
and my hand being warm works really well just to keep the foil adhesive nice and toasty while I um, stick my hand in here and just give it a little rub. Sorry, I gotta find a place that doesn't have adhesive so I don't end up uh, dulling the tackiness because I'm sticking my hands and stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. Now we are still open for business because it's sunny out, so I don't tend to shut the doors um, if I can avoid it while I'm still here working because I've had people show up when I was here working at 10 o'clock at night and buy something. So I just try to make sure I keep the doors open for as many hours as possible. Okay, let's get this little dormered window. Sorry, no, I keep flipping this in ways that you're not necessarily seeing what I'm doing. <laughs> the problem is, if I flip it where you can see it, then I can't see it. So I'm trying to give you some good angles here, but I may not do very well. Okay, let's get up under the window. Give a little rub here. Boy, the kids are having a great time outside today. It's beautiful out, warm and sunny. Okay. All right, let's do this. And this is just coming off here. The release with this adhesive is so good. It's better than any I've ever used before. I'm, and I've tried everyone's, <laughs> quite frankly. There are many people's foil adhesive that I haven't tried because I love foils. So this is why I love Artsyville's so much. And it's why I carry it. I don't carry products that I can't personally back up. Okay. Getting up under all the eaves. Okay, that's pretty well done. Let's get this edge here. And then up under the eaves. Having hot flashes. Sorry, folks. It's perfectly comfortable temperature in here, except right now when I'm talking to you because I'm having a freaking hot flash. Lush. Blech. Somebody had a, an idea that a 57-year-old woman enjoys being overheated all the time. That's, I don't know who had that idea for us, but yeah, I'm not impressed. Hi, Teresa and Grace, nice to see you. Sorry, I do not have my iPad up and running. I ran the battery down to next to nothing, so it's in the back charging. And so I'm just sort of peeking up under the phone, looking at the screen to see who's here. This is gonna be so cute. Okay. Get up under the eaves and this is really what it takes this is not um always fast 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 but imagine if you had to you know do this by hand and then wait for it to dry and do more by hand and wait for it to dry this is such a fast way of getting such a terrific result i'm gonna cut this one in half too oops let's not have it stick to everything You know, up under these eaves, I kind of just have to do it with my fingers because the brushes don't fit. But that's fine because I still get a great result. Okay. Let's see where we at. All right. Let's work on the bottom of this. Let me turn this again so you can see it. Let me just 
Give it a little scrubby scrub. Oh, that gave a good release. Got a little piece of foil stuck to the adhesive and not in the right way. <laughs> there we go. Let's go around the edge here. stop sticking to things. How many of you talk to your projects like I do? I, I haven't made it through a project yet where I haven't talked to it. Either I'm saying nice things or I'm cursing at it. I'm not sure. You know, if, given the day, it could be either result. All right, let me get up under here under the roof. Okay, so far, so good. Look at how cute that is. Okay, now we're going over the windows and the door. Because yes, I foiled those. I even foiled the stairs, but that's gonna take a little extra work to get that released. And I gotta get in here around the doorknob. I mean, already so cute. Ignore any screaming you might hear from outside. We have an ice cream store two doors down. So as soon as the kids get finished with school, they all come running down this way to the ice cream place. And they can be a little loud, but it's happy loud. So it doesn't really bother me unless they're throwing their bikes in front of the doors and stuff. We've had a little bit of that happening, which, you know, I understand kids. I love kids, had them, had one of my own, have two step kids. But, uh, okay, so I'm using this thing, just my little pair of tweezers, just to kind of shove in the corners a little bit. It's a hard surface, so I use it on the side and sort of use the side edge of the, uh, uh, pliers is a little burnishing tool that gets into corners. You can use a toothbrush. You can use anything you can do to get the foil into the hard to reach spots. And yeah, I, I literally will use anything I can get my hands on to get at them. So oh my gosh, so cute. Let me just get this front edge and see if I missed any of the side edges. I think I did. At least missed at least two, if not more. Yep, I missed. I missed them all. But now you can see why I would have cut them into small pieces. It gives me a little more control, especially when I'm working in small spaces. But oh my God, how cute is this? So we have our blue log cabin. We have our pink townhouse. The next thing we have to do is top coat them in it with an exterior rated top coat so that they can be used inside or out. So I have my AquaGuard gloss right here. Now clearly this is in a faux effects jar because I tend to pour gallons into smaller jars to make them easier to work with in, a st in my studio setting. We sell it in quarts and in gallons. Um, it's on our website. If there's none there listed, give me a call, we'll get it in. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start top coating. Now, because of the metallics, I go for the gloss because I don't want the shine to get dulled. Satin or a dull top coat would just totally kill all this beautiful metallic sheen. All right, so we're just gonna keep painting. And somebody's going to say, well, why aren't, you know, it's all clear, so why aren't you just kind of smearing it all over everything? If I do that, I get dribbles of, of um, top coat shoved in corners, 
and then it drips and I get a very poor uh, result later on. It'll ooze out of the window and then I'll have big dribbles on it and I don't like that. So I go in here with my top coat just to make sure there's no sticky spots. Now this one, not really bird friendly. There's no opening in, in here that would let a bird in, not even here at the top, which is where it looks like it would be because that goes, It's there's no hole between here and what's it behind the roof. It's just the roof underneath. This is much more of a decorative piece. Whereas our little log cabin, yeah, you could use that as an actual birdhouse because the opening is standard birdhouse size. So you can see I'm going into these corners and making sure I catch anything that kind of um, builds up in the corners so I don't have any nasty little drips later. Okay, let's get up here. Because I can't remember if I did this, so if I did it already, all I'm doing is doubling up my top coat. That's what happens when you start talking while you're painting. You don't always remember what you painted. All right, I'm gonna put a little top coat right there. All right, let's turn it upright so now I can start painting in a different way. Friend, I always try to lie on its back so that I can get into all these little details here. The rest of it is just, you know, it's all flat surfaces on this, so this only takes a few minutes. Now you can also, if you're a fan of Jennifer's wipe on top coat, that would work just as well with this. Although you need um, to work a little bit to get into these sharp corners inside things. It's a little tougher with a wipe on to get into say this spot right in here. But you put it on with a brush and wipe it off with a piece of uh, cheesecloth or something. That works too. Okay, do this. I don't remember, did I get down here? Nope, I didn't get down there. Top coats can um, throw you because you won't realize you've missed a spot until you grab it and it's the only spot that hasn't been sealed up. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> I, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Okay, one last window and I just stuck my finger where I didn't want to. Usually I move, once I've painted something like this, I usually move it with my finger at the base because then that won't leave fingerprints. But no, right now I just grabbed it and, you know, stuck my finger in the middle of it. Also, I'll stick my finger in that little round opening at the window so that um, I can move it around without ruining my top coat on it. Um, and as you notice, you often, most of the time, actually almost never will you see me using a standard uh, Corona or um, Purdy paintbrush. I like better, I like art brushes for painting furniture and small projects. The bristles are finer, you can reach into it better, and I find that they, per, I find personally that they hold up better. Um, Purdy's are really great house painting trim brushes and stuff. It's not what I would use to paint furniture and stuff. It's not my go-to. My go-to are the brushes that I carry or I go and um, I'm a paintbrush junkie. So I have brushes from all kinds of manufacturers like um, Pierre Finkelstein and uh, who makes great decorative finishing brushes. And I have... Um, Lowell Cornell and Dick Blick brand and, oh God, all of the brands, Winslow. Um, anybody's brush you can think of, I pretty much have them. Um, I don't even, have, I got so many I couldn't even tell you what brands. This one happens to be, what am I looking at? This is a Robert Sinman's White Sable. It's lovely for putting on top coat because it's got a nice flexible um, brush and 
it holds a lot of top coat without squishing it everywhere. So I really like it. It's one of my favorite brushes for things like this. And I gotta work to get some top coat on under here. It wants to suck it right in and not stay sealed. Now I'm making this whole thing glossy, but if I wanted my body here that was just stained, if I want that to be duller, I can step down my top coats. By stepping down, what I mean is first you apply gloss, then you apply a satin, then you apply a dull. And what that does is it allows the matting agents to disperse evenly without um, causing clouding or fogging or blushing, whichever term you're familiar with. Um, so uh, I'll decide tomorrow if I'm gonna step down the shine. Um, right now my goal is just to get this sealed up now and I can look at it once it's dry and decide where I want to go. Because I do that a lot too. Things that look like they, they are where I want them when they're wet. Sometimes when they dry, I'm just like, mm, nah, I need to do something else with that. And this also gives me a chance to get up under the eaves. Uh, I'm going to flip this up for a second and see if I've missed anybody's questions. No, and thank you, Gracie. I appreciate the compliments. Yep, everybody's getting what I'm putting out today, so there don't seem to be a lot of questions. That's awesome. All right, and no, I haven't forgotten that I have cups to finish that I was showing you. Um, I'm not there yet to get to the next step. I have a step that I have to finish with the last of them tonight that you've already seen me do. It's that thin coating that I put on between um, putting on letters and the final seal of epoxy. Uh, I just have two more that I have to run on the cup runners or the cup turners. So I'll get there. All right, now, because this doesn't have foil on it too, this is really wanting to suck in the um, top coat, the, uh, the uh, AquaGuard gloss. It's loving sucking this in. So I'm having to work to spread it around a little. Again, I'm putting this over stained wood. If I wanted to, again, I could sand this once this is dry because I will pop the grain a little bit again. But this is a log cabin. And so I'm good with the rustic, rough, texture of the wood because it feels appropriate for this. Now, you know, we have this shape. We had the little townhouse. We have a church. We have a gazebo. Um, we have lighthouses. We have all kinds of really, we have round houses. We have regular houses. We have all these wonderful um, birdhouse shapes for you to peruse. It's on paintedstudio.com. So if you want those shapes, definitely check this out. I think you'll be very happy with it. And we even put together bird kits for you where we send you kits with a couple feet of foil, some paint, some adhesive, and uh, some top coat. So yeah, you'll, bird houses are awesome. And if you like it, want a kit and you like any of the ones you see here, um, when you place your order, there's a place at checkout to tell me any specific details. And you can just simply say, I want the, all the stuff for the blue log cabin I saw you do online on videos or for the pink townhouse or anything else that you want. You just specify what color foils, what color uh, paint base or kind of leave it up to me and I'll just create something special for you. Okay, I think I've got all three sides now. I just gotta go around check to make sure nothing's gonna drip because there's the one thing that seems to always ruin a really great project is when you come back a little while later and find the whole darn thing has had saggy drippings of something. Nothing. That, nothing kills a great job better than that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the base. 
Now I could paint from the top down, but I actually need to be able to grab onto the roof right now to move this around. And even though I'm smearing the top coat around a little bit, I'm trying to make all my final strokes in the same direction as the wood grain. Um, it just provides a nicer finished look. I gotta make sure I seal up the poles too. Can't have our little support structures not sealed up. That would be disappointing. And the roof. Okay. Get the sides here. Now again, reminder, our Saman water-based sizes uh, stains are not exterior rated. So if I wanted to put this outside, uh, which is I'm, what I'm planning for right now, I need to use a water-based exterior rated top coat if I wanted to protect my colors better. I'd use a UV protectant sun, a top coat, which I don't happen to have on here right now. I'll determine you know, where I'm gonna put this and if I need the UV top coat on it. It's one of those things I get to decide. Okay, let's turn it this way. Get the rest of this done. And we will have two birdhouses completed, top coated, and ready to roll. Now, obviously none of these have holes drilled in them for hanging outside. Um, if you want something like that, again, you can do it yourself. You can run a, easily run a drill through here, or you can ask me and I'll drill a hole somewhere and set it up so that you can put an eye bolt in it and that'll be great. Heck, if you want me to, I'll see if I have any eye bolts and I can put them in. I have jewelry ones. I don't think I have any that are the right size for this right now, just you know, in my piles of stuff. I might have in my toolkit that is in storage at the moment with um, all the fire remission, but I don't happen to have it right here in the studio. Okay, I know I have the lid for this top coat somewhere. Where on earth did I put it? Well, we're gonna just set that to the side and then I'm gonna flip this up. Uh, oh, you're just having fun watching me make the mistakes for you. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> Trust me, I accept my role is watch me make the mess so you learn not, what not to do. Oh, look, I found my lid. I flipped my lid, I found my lid. You can tell it's hot right now because I'm getting these little crazy curly bangs, like little spiral curl bangs. They're not easy to see through. Okay, I'm gonna share a couple of my favorite new things that I have been using with doing epoxy. Now, I, this is gonna be nothing new to anybody, but using these silicone stirs, um, this was sent to me as a gift, but they're very inexpensive. You can get them at the dollar store. Means you don't constantly have to throw away mixing sticks, which I have normally do. Um, so you can use this over and over and over again, and when it gets too thick, you just peel it right off of here. The next thing is, if you have lots of little tiny details to shoot into your design, on Amazon, you can buy plastic syringes, no needles. See, there, I got a hundred of them, I think for $10. And since I pour a lot of epoxy, that's a great deal. You can order them in much, much, much smaller amounts. Now this was the genius tip from a friend of mine who I saw do it on her page. I haven't done it yet for me. But we here in the studio, because we have a pet store next door, so we often have flies. We He had crickets, so sometimes we get crickets hopping through here. And it's not great if you have them land in your epoxy. Um, you've seen pictures of me doing this before. Nobody wants to drill fly guts out of epoxy. There's these things. These outdoor table covers for food. You put your epoxied items underneath this and the bugs can't land on them. And for me, I'm like, oh, this is a little bit of the best idea ever. So 
I think, again, I bought a package of six of those, I think for $9. So they're very affordable, very useful, and very easy. Those both come from Amazon. These you can get at the dollar store. So if you happen to have cake covers and stuff at home, you don't want the covers that are glass. You don't want to put it under glass. You need air circulation. But you definitely, if you have issues like I do, or if you're doing a lot of work in the garage where there's things that crawl around like spiders, or you might knock something over, um, yeah, you want something like this. Look how easy that is. Now this will cover a whole lot of projects for me. So I'm thrilled, I'm so excited that these arrived today because I have a whole lot of stuff that I, after I get off with you guys, I'm still pouring tons and tons of stuff every day because we have these, this um, farmer's market booth that we're gonna be doing several weekends over the summer and in the fall. And I need to make sure I have merchandise made for it. So this morning I spent the whole morning making earrings. Anyway, I think that covers everything. If you have any questions, you know to post them in uh, the comments and I would appreciate any little sprinkles that you wanna do because that would be fabulous. Um, and meanwhile, have a great day, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.